in the Gospels. Jesus teaches us by using parables. Through them comes God's message in simple story form. Today a parable might begin like this. Once there was a great circus. In the march of nations and peoples, a great circus parade in which some were participants, some merely spectators. A parade in which human beings seldom knew one another or cared for one another. And into this great circus of life came a man who dared to be different.
You go to a film for an experience. It's going to stimulate thought and feeling. And feeling is, at this point, is more important than thought. Questions have been asked about the title, Parable. Originally, I had, well, I had been with this project since uh, the very beginning, the first day in New York when the uh, Protestant Council Committee got together and um, decided on making on making a film for the World's Fair. The subject matter being Jesus, light of the world. I wrote a very long script I called uh, In All My Holy Mountain. There are parts of it that are uh, used in parable, but that isn't what the council wanted. A very fine person named Lois Anderson, um, who worked for the Baptists, invited me up to um, to Green Lake, Wisconsin, to spend a week talking to the pastors and theologians and what have you from the Baptists. I found the discussions with some of their theologians and clergy very, very stimulating. My mind was working and I drove home and in the Dells, I remember, Wisconsin Dells, where there were advertisements for the Circus World Museum in the little town of Baraboo. And so it's a kind of a shrine to the American circus. I sat down and suddenly a bunch of things started coming together. Modern French artist, Georges Rouault. And he painted the faces of Christ. And then he also painted what we would call clowns. The face of Christ becomes the face of the clown. The face of the clown becomes the face. This I saw. That's where I came up with the idea for parable. There's no dialogue in parable. One noise in the picture, which is my voice. Suddenly there's a voice where there hadn't been any human voices heard. And I looked out the window and there was Manhattan. You know, and all those buildings. And I had this panoramic view. And I heard in my head the cry, the agonized cry of the clown. I looked out there and I heard that voice going out over and over and reaching over to Jersey and reaching west and getting to Chicago and San Francisco and Honolulu and Tokyo. I mean, like it's spreading out its wings over the world. Well, it sure worked. And the audience is not expecting to hear a voice and then, boom, the parable got a lot of things going. It inspired Godspell. I've also heard that it um, influenced the creators of Jesus Christ Superstar. Well, one of the most powerful men in New York was city planner Moses, Robert Moses. Robert Moses heard that a film was being edited for the Protestant Council of the City of New York for the pavilion um, showing Christ as a clown. He didn't think this was appropriate. He wanted the film out. It was great. 
because that meant that stuff about Parable hit the New York Times every day, hit the New York Herald Tribune, the news, it was news. So also, there are two factors. One, a lot of the, there were several big donors and fundraisers for the pavilion. Well, several of their donors said, if you go ahead with this project, we'll drop out. And they did. I mean, threats came, for example, from somebody from Con Ed, who had an executive position, wrote and said, if you show this film, it's quite as a clown. Nobody had seen it, of course. It wasn't finished yet. If you show this film at the fair, well, I'll, I'll see that your electricity is cut off, so you can't show it. Another, I think it was a minister from Long Island someplace, actually wrote a letter threatening, if you show the film, I'll come in with my shotgun and shoot holes in the movie screen. I mean, this is the kind of reaction it was getting. And now remember, this was 1964. That's over 50 years ago. Parable was much more controversial then than it is now because of Parable. Once the film came out with a big name, Protestant Council of the City of New York presents, they had won a huge first prize with the Catholics. I mean, it, it, it was an ecumenical kind of thing. It, it sort of bridged the barriers between different denominations and, and so forth and so on. Time magazine ran a What to See at the Fair for six months in 1964, six months, 65. And the, the first thing in their column, what to see at the fair, was um, parable. And a very good, good write-up. Newsweek magazine um, came out later in assessing the entire fair and said of the 50 films that Parable was probably, and they said probably, probably the best film at the fair. What I try to do in my films is work toward a moment of perception, what I call direct perception, a kind of epiphany, and it must, for the most part, take place in, in, a, in, in the thing the film works up to. And after, in parable, the clown goes off in the distance following the last wagon in the circus parade. There's a slow fade. And then after the picture fades out, the music continues distantly for three or four beats. And then there are a few, couple of beats of silence. That's very important. That's what I'm working for. The moment that you can't explain with just words. It's a nonverbal thing. You either see it or you don't.